The American military designed the Abrams tank to level the playing field against Russian quantity. It's so good that just a few Abrams tanks can take out scores of Russian tanks. So again, we come back to thinking about this from Vladimir Putin's standpoint. Each time America paused to worry about provoking him, we went ahead and did it. And sure, it took a little while. But 11 months ago, the Ukrainians wouldn't have even dreamed of asking for Abrams tanks, much less getting them. Sending Abrams tanks now sends a clear and unambiguous message to Putin that we will stop at nothing to defeat him. And for a man who views defeat in Ukraine as an existential threat to him and to his regime, uh, that is a pretty serious message. William Taylor is here, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Mr. Ambassador, we always appreciate it, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, does this message come with any danger? It comes with danger to Mr. Putin. It comes with danger for the Russian forces for exactly the reasons that you said, Leland. This is a, this is a very sophisticated weapon. But even beyond that, um, this is a message that has danger written on it for the Russians because when the Americans send the Abrams tanks, that opens the door indeed opens the floodgates for German tanks to come from a lot of different countries in Europe um, that were waiting for the Americans to send theirs. And so the Germans now have allowed their Leopard tanks, which are on the battlefield that are, that are in Europe right now and can get to the Ukrainian battlefield quickly. That is the message to the Russians. No, no, I, I, look, there, there's no question that this continues to up the, the pressure on Vladimir Putin's army. Uh, his foreign minister, uh, his, his, the former president of Russia, who's one of his lackeys, uh, and he himself have all talked about how defeat in Ukraine is an existential threat to Russia. If Russia faces an existential threat, uh, they reserve the right to use their nuclear weapons. Are, are we being clear-eyed enough about how Vladimir Putin is going to react if uh, the end result that you just described happens? Leland, you just described uh, the progression um, of the weapons that we provided. <clears throat> you know, we started, one of the things uh, you could add to your list is we started off providing stingers um, to shoot down low-flying aircraft and helicopters. We're now, I think you pointed this out, we're now sending Patriots. Uh, we started out sending Javelins um, that would take out individual tanks. Now we're sending HIMARS. So we've gone up the ladder and, and President Putin has kind of complained about this all along. Um, however, he's done nothing. Oh, well, um, no, that, he's that, losing on the battlefield. It's a fair point. So should we just sort of give up this charade about worrying what Vladimir Putin is going to do? Why not give the Ukrainians uh, F-15s? Why not give them uh, long-range missiles to go uh, bomb Moscow? We shouldn't give them any long-range missiles to bomb Moscow, but Why we not? should give them F-15. Why not? Because we're not at war with the uh, with the Russian. Uh, we're not at war with the Russians. And that would generate a war. There's no doubt. What will not generate a war is the Ukrainians fighting against the Russian forces in their country, and that's what we're providing. That's exactly what we're providing. We should we should continue to do that. And you're right. We should give high, even longer range weapons so that the Ukrainians can shoot at the Russian targets, military targets, Leland, unlike the Russians that fire at civilian targets. We should give the Ukrainians the ability to fire at military targets at great depth so no, that they look, can push I, the Russians, so they can push the Russians out of their country. Forgive me, and, and I, I was in eastern Ukraine during the 2014 war. I've seen the brutality of the Russians uh, up close and personal. It is horrific in every, in every sense. And there's no, there's no question the Ukrainians are fighting for their lives. They're the victims here. We, we all understand that. But you say with certainty that what we're doing now is not going to start a war, but giving them weapons to, to hit farther into Russia is going to start a war. How can we be so certain that we truly know where the line is if for no other reason than we keep moving it? Lynn, I think this whole idea of a line is a bad metaphor. It's a bad concept. There's no line. You, well, you well, said do, yourself, do, do you're, respect, you're respect, exactly sir, right. You, you, Putin, you Putin drew it yourself. Have, we said, you said, have, do Putin respect, has sir, nothing, you, no line in his mind. Well, hold on, line. sir, it's, it's I'll let there. you finish. But you were the one who Thank said, you. you were the one who said, we shouldn't give them long range missiles to hit R Moscow, because that would, that would start a war. That's a line, is it not? 
What we should do is give the Ukrainians the ability to shoot within Ukraine, deep into Ukraine, where the Russians are, not at at the Kremlin. We're not talking about shooting to, at the Kremlin. We're talking about shooting at military targets that are in Ukraine that are Russian targets. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.